where we are advancing faith, family, and freedom. Well, my family, like yours, is grateful for those who produce family-friendly entertainment that is not only uplifting, but teaches the timeless principles and Christian character are often so scarce in the entertainment field today. That's why I'm excited to tell you about Alone Yet Not Alone. Alone Yet Not Alone is uplifting and inspiring. It grips the viewer and encourages you to look beyond yourself, your relationship with God, family, and serving others. It's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's Wednesday, October 5th. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I just finished a video with a response from Josh Duggar's former co-worker, Caleb Williams, roasting Josh and the family and what Caleb's plans are moving forward and if he plans to sue Josh, Anna, or the Duggars. Now, this video is going to be about uh, Josh Duggar's never seen before photographs from inside Seagaville. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> I know. So remember a couple months ago, I was getting a ton of feedback. I was getting a lot of emails, lots of emails from people claiming to be on the inside, family of with Josh, lots of details. Like you guys learned that Josh had a prayer box outside of his door. Uh, you learned that he might be learning day trading, that he had been assigned a job. You learned that Josh was keeping a low profile or at least trying to keep a low profile. You learned that there was a lot of talk and chatter in this, in this facility. You also learned that he was gonna have to be okay with diversity and a lot of different people. Be the funny thing and the ironic thing is I got this audio and this, these pictures I'm going to show you in the, in the minute from an anonymous email account and they were the ones that sent me all that information. And then another family member said that no special anything happened when Josh moved in. Like their family member said it was all the same as normal, no special cleaning, no nothing. I don't really know if that's true. I mean, they always say like if a prisoner is lying or speaking, they might be lying. They have like the gossip and the whole world that goes around them, but uh, you never know, like one person says there's a group saying that they have to clean, especially for Josh, and then there's someone that says that didn't happen. So who knows what the truth is. But what I'm going to tell you right now is about some photographs that have been uh, released by the Daily Mail, but I also have some photographs from July when Josh actually was transferred into the facility. So he has become pretty much unrecognizable at this point. He is serving his time in Seagaville and he is actually scheduled for release in August of 2032, shy of the 12 and a half years. So he'll serve over 20, he'll serve like 10 and a half years. So when Josh first arrived, I received a group of photos from this anonymous email and it was Josh just getting into his new unit. So Josh was transferred into a unit and I don't know if you're aware, but Seagaville, and they try to integrate as much as possible. And because of Seagaville being designed for individuals that are one, high profile, or two, protected, they all have to like learn to get along. And so Josh was not placed in and instead he was put right into the mixed in with a pod and his pod mates or his unit mates uh, were taking notice of Josh and figuring things out. Incidentally, it wasn't long after this, the media got released by radar and we put out all the stuff that those anonymous emails suddenly stopped. So, or the phone was taken away from whoever was using it. But in the photos you'll you see from me, which were from July of 2022, Josh is seen outside of his room, but Josh was in a t-shirt, in shorts, wearing flip-flops, and he was just chatting away with this random guy that he had met um, after being in, going through intake. At the time of his going in, he had he was clean cut, he was clean shaven. He looked like the kid that was on Counting On. You know, he didn't look like he had been worn and torn and he didn't look like hardened at, any, at all. He didn't look scraggly or anything like that. Well, the Daily Mail then 
yesterday posted a new photo of Josh. So this is four months in. So the change is dramatic to me between July and October. And in the photo, Josh's hair is quite a bit longer and he is fully, full on beard, full, like unkept. He's wearing prison gear. He's got a lanyard on. He looks like the part of what he's in there for, if you know what I'm saying. So his appearance has changed dramatically and he is not, you know, shaving and getting his hair cut as much. Now, razors are not easy to come by and shaving is not easy <laughs> to do apparently. And it's not something that all prisoners will do simply because of it's hard to get razors sometimes. Sometimes they don't get razors. Um, you can get some from like your commissary and they'll issue them, but they, apparently they're not the best. Uh, they have like hair, they can get haircuts and they can take care of themselves. Josh is just apparently not interested in getting a haircut or shaving his beard. If he doesn't have to look good for Anna and he doesn't have to look good for the media, apparently he doesn't have to look good and he doesn't care. So he's got it all, he looks scraggly. I was like, oh my gosh, Josh. Now, a lot of people were like, what are his hands doing? Why is he throwing up symbols? And first of all, I'm like, y'all just, I don't know. I don't know what Josh is doing. I don't know what this means. I'm not gonna, it, he's, he's drinking a cup of coffee. I don't know what he's doing. So, um, but Josh is acclimating inside and he was hanging out with some other prisoners drinking whatever it was in that was in that cup. It's a far removal from Josh's days in the IVLP and with the FRACA, FR, FRCA. Um, fun fact is that Bill Gothard has this really weird thing about facial hair. Like he does not think that men should have facial hair. They're not really fond of men having beards and men not shaving. And uh, they're also very not into men not taking care of their hair and having their hair long. So Josh is breaking all kinds of rules where he's letting his full beard grow out. He's not cutting his hair. <laughs> so he's not adhering to the strict fundamentalist beliefs that he grew up with. I mean, have you ever seen Jim Bob Duggar with a beard? Jim Bob's children, some of them actually do. Uh, Jason Duggar would be one that doesn't shy away from having some facial hair. Jo Josiah here and there would have some facial hair. Sometimes Jed will grow out his facial hair. But for the most part, the Duggar boys stay pretty clean cut and they don't let themselves go like this. So Josh is unrecognizable. And I shared the photos on my Instagram and this is what, here's some of the comments of what you said. This person said, his outside is starting to, to match his inside. Too bad 12 years isn't long enough. Just someone else said, just imagine in another 10 years. Someone said, that smirk gets me. No freaking regard or remorse for the damage to victims or his families. Someone said, no Anna around to give him free haircuts. Probably part of his defense that he's unjustly prisoned because he's totally used some, he'll totally use some defense like that. And someone said, he's trading prayers for ramen in there. Someone said, I hate seeing him smile. He's probably working some sucker into doing something he wants done. I wish he were there longer. It's a weird way to hold the cup, but overall people said that Josh's insides are starting to look like his, outsides are starting to look like his inside. So Josh Duggar is not as clean cut as he used to be in these never before seen photographs. Uh, Daily Mail got the first, uh, the one of him just a month, just this month, and the other ones that I am sharing are from December or July of 2022. So what are your thoughts about Josh Duggar's prison attire? Tell me in the comments below. Bye guys.